has been upgraded to what we call a major emergency category with over 230 firefighters that have arrived on scene. And we've moved into a defensive posture for the fire attack. We set up a medical branch that was quickly uh, created for treating and transporting our fellow firefighters. A significant ball of flame that erupted out and continued to grow, um, I'd say at least 30 feet high, 30 feet wide in some times. Uh, firefighters looked like they might have had to go straight through that ball of flame to get to safety across the street to their aerial truck. In the windows and then the smoke just billowing out. It took about two hours for the 230 firefighters to put this fire out tonight. Hey there, we're just getting an update from a spokesman from LAFD who just walked over. Would you mind coming over to give us an update? Oh, hello there. Um, this is Captain Eric Scott with LAFD. He gave us an update earlier today. What can you tell us now about what's going on, Captain? Well, this is going to be an ongoing incident. We're bringing in uh, multiple agencies to investigate the cause, which is a paramount concern. Uh, in addition to, of course, uh, our, our dear members that have um, gone through something that all of us dread to hear about. Uh, we have 11 firefighters that were injured. Um, they were inside performing fire attack. They were on the roof when there was an explosion that erupted at least a 30 by 30 foot flame that came out like a blowtorch that these firefighters had to walk through. Um, at this point, we do have uh, four of them that are in the burn unit. We do have uh, another two that are on uh, ventilators. Um, so they. Um, our hearts go out to them and, and we're supporting them every way possible throughout our union, our chaplains, peer support. Have you ever seen anything like this? This is definitely one of the worst incidents I have ever seen. Um, the aftermath that is still here behind, uh, you could see the, the personal protective equipment that were pulled off of our members that is charred. Helmets that are uh, partially melted. The um, this, street, this is the street it happened on. Fire's on one side. The truck that's completely on the opposite side uh, is catching fire. The seats are burning. It's um, got spalding on it. So just a very significant uh, incident. It's what was uh, described as um, very tragic, our heightened radio traffic. Um, the firefighters that arrived first on scene were saying it sounded like a freight train. It sounded, some of the companies coming in said it almost sounded like a helicopter was about to land on their vehicle due to the intensity of the uh, explosion and what then looked almost like a blowtorch continuing to come out for a short time period. So um, very challenging um, situation. We're working very close with our Fire Prevention Bureau to determine the occupancy, what was inside, what was permitted. Uh, appears to have butane inside, um, and uh, all of that is part of our active investigation. Our arson counterterrorism, who's the best of the best, they're combing through debris, looking at burn patterns, talking to witnesses, grabbing surveillance, and we're going to figure out as much as we can as soon as we can. Do you have any information on what could have caused this explosion while you guys were fighting this fire? It's too early to tell. Um, the facts are the facts. You know, we responded at uh, 6 30 p.m. to a reported structure fire. We had moderate smoke. It looked like any other structure fire that we go to all the time. We run over 1,300 emergency incidents every day. We're trained to deal with this. But what happened was extremely unexpected. Um, significant explosion erupted um, for a very chaotic scene that uh, tragically burned uh, many of our firefighters. Our thoughts and prayers are with those 11 firefighters tonight. Thank you very much for your time, Captain. Firefighters coming down the aerial ladder from the roof with their turnout coats on fire. They had to pass through a fireball to get to the other side of the street to safety. Now, Captain Scott with LAFD says he's seen the daunting footage and is so grateful for the personal protective equipment. That is very difficult for us to watch. Uh, first off, after seeing the intensity of the fire that they had to go through for that duration, we are so happy that we don't have a fatality. Uh, second, we're um, very impressed with our personal protective equipment that was able to save lives. It has three layers to it. So it has an outer shell, it has a moisture barrier, and it has a thermal layer. And importantly, in between that is air pockets. All of that works together systematically to protect us from that incredible blowtorch that came out.